Hello everyone and welcome to the next tutorial here on duct tape stuff. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a duct tape woven wallet. And this has been a very popular request. I've gotten pretty much countless requests for this over the past couple months. So I thought I'd finally make a tutorial for it. For this tutorial I'm going to automatically assume that you know how to make a bifold wallet already because this is pretty much an addition to a bifold wallet. It's made a little bit more, a little differently and a little more complex. So I'm going to assume you already know how to make a bifold wallet. If you don't know how to make a bifold wallet, go watch my video on how to make a bifold wallet and you'll get an idea on how to do it. First thing you're going to do, I've already had the, the two sheets made here for the, uh, the start of the wallet. You're going to make two pieces of tape here, two pieces of duct tape that are four, using four strips a piece. So four on here, four on here. The strips are seven and three quarter inches long and obviously you want to combine them, the four of them, so that you end up with a sheet that is three inches long on the, on the ruler here. Okay, so you put your first two, you stick them together, you measure with your third one, you put it, stick it down so that the bottom of it lines up at three inches, you flip it over, and you apply that last strip. And then you have those two pieces, obviously different colors, that are seven and three quarters inches long and three inches wide. So make those two sheets now, and then you'll be ready for our, our second step. So after you've made those two sheets, this is where the fun begins. First you're going to do is take one of your sheets, doesn't really matter which one it is, you're going to measure with your ruler where the one inch mark is and the, and the two inch mark is. Obviously the three is going to end up down here. You're going to mark where the, the one inch and two inch marks are and you're going to draw a line, two lines, through this piece of tape, this uh, sheet of tape, and you're going to cut so that you have these three strips right there. Okay? So that's simple enough. That's what you guys like what you're going to do and you keep those together. You're going to take your second sheet up here and you're going to do the exact same thing as so you're going to do it the opposite way. You're going to measure the bottom here and every inch mark put a little little uh, mark with your pen. One, two, two inches, three inches, four inches, five, six, and seven. And then mark all the way up and then you're going to cut those with the scissors just like this. And you are going to have a little bit left at the end here. Probably a little bit more if you did it to seven and three quarters inches. You're going to have a little bit of an extra strip. But that's okay. Next thing we're going to do is take all these pieces, stick them together, and we're going to start actually weaving the wallet. Alright, so let's start weaving. We take our first one here, we'll slide it underneath, right here. Actually, you know what? We'll do it this way. We'll put this one so that there's a black piece in the middle. So you just want to line it up with the bottom here, the middle, and obviously this one will go right on top. And once you get that very first piece in, what you're going to do is you're going to tilt the entire thing up like this. You're going to cut out one piece of duct tape that is three inches long and you're just going to seal this up on the bottom here. And this will give it a little, little bit of room to play with and you'll be able to work pretty well with it. You just want to overlap by just a tiny bit, I'd say about a quarter of an inch because you don't want to cover up too much of the blocks that are going to be put on there. So you just want to pull this whole thing up. You'll notice that the middle piece is not attached here, but it will be in a second. You just want to line it up with the bottom here. Make sure that it lines up with these other strips that are stuck down. And then just take this whole piece, flip it over, and stick it down nice and carefully just like that. Okay? So there we go. Now I'm going to flip this out back over, and now we're going to start weaving the rest of the pieces. Next thing we're going to do is take our second piece and we're going to alternate this, obviously, by putting that one just like that. And you'll notice that the back, the, this back part is, this is where the sticky side is going to show up. See, so if you need to get this as close to this black piece as you can, so you're just going to have to peel that up just a little bit, maybe a little bit more, and then you'll be able to stick that underneath. This is the only one you'll have to do this for, obviously. You just want to make sure it lines up just like that. Perfect. And then make sure that will get stuck down eventually. Then you take your next piece. Where obviously we're going to follow that same design that we started off with. Just like this. So we're just going to slide this in there. And now you can really start to see that checker pattern take shape. You're just going to keep doing this back and forth, back and forth until you see the checkers all the way down here. So do that now. So this is what the piece will look like after you've put all the, uh, the, the the blocks in here. I didn't actually have to use this little piece on the end here because it just happened to go right towards the end there. I'm not really quite sure how that happened, just the measurements seem to work out well. But if you, you do end up with a little piece, you're just going to slide the, the, the rest of this piece in and then just attach it like we're about to attach it now. So I'll put that aside. To attach this other side here, you're going to take another 3-inch strip, 
just as we did over here and you're going to overlap by about the exact same length that you did on the other side there and then you won't have to worry about the stuff moving around too much this time so fold it back around and don't be concerned about how the blocks are covered up on this side because I'll show you why you're not going to need to worry about that in just a second. So you can flip that back over. Next we have to connect the tops and the bottom here. So what I did is I took, just took a 7 and 3 quarter inch strip and I cut it in half so I have two pieces to work with here. You're going to come on the bottom here and you're going to overlap it by just as much as, on, as you did on these, on these two sides just to make it look roughly even. Stick that down, flip the whole thing over, and then fold it back around just like that. Okay. So then we have that side complete. You're going to take this last 7 3 quarter inch strip and do the exact same thing on the top here that you just did on the bottom. Stick that down, fold the whole thing on the back there. And there you have your uh, your checkered piece there. You can you can just trim the sides if there's a little bit stuck off, but that's exactly what you pretty much exactly what you're making. Now now you're really coming to a dilemma, which was exactly what I'm going to explain to you in this next step. Okay, so now I want to explain why the back part here doesn't really make a difference. Basically, when you make the wallet, you can choose to have either the outside of the wallet to, to look like this and the inside to be just like a regular piece, like a wallet. Like, for example, if you were to take two more of these strips and then just, well, actually, you, when you just one of them, you just stick it here, attach it on the sides and the bottom, and you'd have just a normal wallet. The outside here would have the checkered pattern on it. Now, you can decide to do two pieces like this that are checker patterned and have both this side facing the outside on, on the one side and then of course one on um, one of this side facing the outside on the inside of the wallet. So you would you would to do this you would take two more of these sheets and make an exact duplicate of this sheet here. Let me give an example right here to we'll give you an idea. This is another like a prototype uh, checkered wallet here. It's got the checker pattern on the outside here, but also has the exact same checker pattern on the inside. So this is really two of these sheets made. One of them stuck like this, and then one of them stuck like this. And then you attach them on the sides and bottom like you would a normal wallet. Now if you look on the inside, it looks just like this does here. So that's why it doesn't really make a difference because it's going to be on the inside of the wallet and no one's really going to see it. So that's basically how to make a woven duct tape wallet. Like I said before, it's up to you if you want to make it completely woven inside and out or if you just want to make the outside woven like that. I will warn you that they are pretty thick just because you're using two sheets of duct tape per side instead of just the one sheet for one side and one sheet for the other. So you are gonna, it is going to be a lot thicker than a normal duct tape wallet. Um, you can put normal credit card holders on the insides. I will be showing how to make woven credit card holders eventually in a mini tutorial. So that will be coming up. So that's basically how to make a duct tape woven wallet. I hope you guys enjoy this wallet tutorial. It's been a lot of fun making these and I will see you guys next time. So take care and enjoy making woven wallets.